Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Hardcore. Oh, we've had a birth! Oh, yes! <laughs> I've wanted more babies for a while now so that we can get a mending villager, so this is fantastic news. And speaking of the expanding village, I think it's time that we finally tackle the sleeping quarters of the village because um yeah, this is not good what i've done here <laughs> hey everyone wow there's yep yeah. okay yeah i'm i'm gonna fix this it's fine it's fine first thing that we need in order to do any amount of building is some more dark oak wood i feel like i'm constantly running out of this block but it's just because i refuse to come out here and chop it down very often because i'm terrified of creepers <laughs> i don't know why though i feel like i could survive a blast at this point so i'm just gonna come out here and go for it i just need a few stacks in order to complete the pillars for a brand new sleeping quarters and basically inn for my villagers we're gonna call it an inn but it's basically gonna be where all of the villagers are able to go and sleep, or at least most of them. I'm honestly really excited for this. I think that one of the best parts of building in a village is the fact that the houses that you build actually get used. So as soon as this inn goes up, the villagers will immediately begin using it, which is super cool. All right, this should be enough dark oak wood to get me started on the frame at the very least. Oh goodness. <laughs> I should probably fix this gate soon, huh? It's okay, as soon as we get the inn in today, um, we'll be able to fix this whole pathway. Wait, that was a weird sentence. I, mm, okay. First things first, with this transformation process of the inn, I do have to temporarily relocate the villagers. I have to assume they're gonna be very angry about this, but it's fine. Honestly, what are they not angry about at this point? I temporarily relocate everybody into the tavern. Just feel like this is a good place for everybody to hang out. It's recently built, it's got room for lots of the beds, they can still walk around, come upstairs. This is like, best case scenario. They shouldn't mind at all. And now, we begin deconstructing this. <laughs> this is the fun part. Got lots and lots of building materials back, which is always good. Sorry, villager. I, uh, I don't mean to alarm you, but I have taken the roof off of this house. It's fine. Look how much this opens the place up. And I actually kind of love this building. I didn't even realize that I liked it, but this building like tucked into that tower. I actually like that. We're gonna keep that. We're gonna transform it to keep the theme eventually, but I like that. We'll move the blacksmith just back a little bit, I think. Just like, yeah, we've got a little bit of room off the back here. So we'll move the blacksmith slightly back and over this way. And then everybody will just get a little more room. The road can go straight through here and kind of curve into this way. Oh, it's gonna be perfect! Look how much space we have! Right, now that I've spent a moment uh, enjoying the amount of grassy space we have here, it's time to completely fill it up. This is the plan that I have at the moment. This is gonna be the foundation wall, so this is gonna be a fairly big building. And I'm glad because we have quite a lot of space here and it'll make it look a lot more like a tight-knit castle or kingdom if it is close together. Okay, so I've been looking at this and planning it out, and I realized that if I put a roof here, it'll actually touch this tower, which is not ideal. And I'd like to give Dandelion Hill a bit more room, so I'm actually going to take this whole design and shift it over closer to the center by about two blocks. The center will still have lots of room, and we can redesign it when we do the tree. Um, by the way, this is why I've been waiting for the tree, mostly. Just in case. <laughs> you never know, and it's, it's really painful to work around a custom tree that you spent hours building. Hopefully, with the shift over two blocks, it should help the entire design to just make a bit more sense. Better for me to realize this right now than later on when I'm way far into detailing the project. This is why we plan things. Okay, I think that this placement looks way better. Look at this, right? So now we can walk along, we can go under the tunnel, and there's a little bit more room over here to work on a little garden and access the tower. And with the overhangs, we can walk directly under the inn, which is gonna give a really good immersive feel. Even over here where it seems to get a little close to the town center, it's mostly the overhang that is getting close. We can even add like a little window or doorway or some sort of little shop over here. And I think it'll just work really well to kind of close off this entire area. It also makes more sense with this pathway out of my castle over here. I like it. I think it's perfect. Let's build it. Huh. 
and with the roof marked in ah it's looking so good i actually love it this is gonna be a little balcony here because we know how much the villagers love getting on top of things so hopefully that'll help them little roof off to the side and now all we have to do is fill in the walls easy right <laughs> all right let's get to work filling this thing the whole way in almost complete. The roof and walls are currently in. I like it quite a lot. I think it looks great on the foundation, but obviously it needs all the details. It needs a staircase going up. It needs just, you know, all the things that'll make it an actual inn. So it's time for us to get to work on that now. Um, we are gonna need some spruce wood and a crafting table. You know what? Maybe I'll just put a crafting table inside. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna use this side over here to put a staircase, I think. And I'm gonna do it this way, I, I think. <laughs> it's really hard to decide how to actually lay all of this out in a practical way for the villagers, but I'm hoping that a little curvy staircase just like this should, in theory, do the trick. I hope. You know that I'm saying that I hope a lot, but um, villagers can be a little finicky, as we've learned, so. I have this area out here that has successfully become a little balcony. I don't know how much they'll actually use it, but the option is here if they'd like it and it's fully fenced off, they can jump over. They, uh, oh my, I, I really can't explain it. I, <laughs> I'm not even mad anymore. Just confused, disappointed. Do not do it again, do not. Okay, see, it's all sealed off. It's fine, it's safe up here. I'm not sure if this is what I want, but I'm kind of picturing a little bit of a loft up here somehow. So I wanna see if I can make that work. This is an inn, so having quite a lot of floors I feel like would make a lot of sense. Of course, I do have to bar up these windows ASAP because they will find a way to die. They will, so I'm gonna do that now. Windows are going in. Perfect. Beautiful. Love it. Oh, hello, Pierre. <laughs> what you doing? Right, this, this, this is my house. Um, okay, nice, nice visit. Um, need some doors. Oh, flowers do have to move. There we go. There we go. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> I really like it. Okay, I kind of love this. I think the ceiling looks great. I think this is a very safe staircase. We can put extra beds up here. It's good. I like it. Of course, we also have to work on the cobble road that is sort of connecting everything together. Oh, hello. We have a leather worker. You're new. <laughs> I didn't really want a leather worker. That's from the cauldron, I assume, that I have placed somewhere. <laughs> Uh, I was hoping for a librarian. Of course, the next thing that we need to do is set up some furniture. I'm gonna set up some different like tables and chairs sort of situation, little pots in places, and of course, get the beds in. I want to make this look like a little storage area eventually for everybody's things as they come through. And this will be the area where everybody can sort of just sleep or gather or whatever. And now it's time to finally move some of these lovely beds into place. We'll start with a couple of the yellow ones. I really love this little room. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little shelf with a plant on it as well for whoever's staying here. And that is the first in bedroom. Okay, next two more beds. Um, do you know what? Let's take four of these beds actually. So at the moment, the inn has six beds, which is exactly what it had before, just in a better layout. Two beds right here and then four beds upstairs in the loft. I think this layout works so much better. It'll be so cool to see the villagers going around in this area. I'm really excited about it. I like it. I want to decorate this side a little bit more and just add sort of a little signpost to this area to indicate that it's an inn. That'll help similar to how we have the library, I hope, <laughs> in theory. Just gonna kind of stick out a little area and on this one, I'm gonna go with an emerald. I really like this, it's so cute. Look at when I leave my castle, oh my goodness. <laughs> it's adorable, I like it. 
just to fit with the style that we're going with, I'm also gonna go ahead and add a chimney to the inn. I may not do a fireplace on the inside, but I think it is important that the people of the inn would be warm, so fireplace makes sense. And also at this point would just be really weird if I decided not to do one in the inn <laughs> and I have one on every other building. Hey look, they're going inside. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love watching them actually see and use the builds. It's so much fun. Here's what the inn looks like so far. Oh my goodness, they're actually using it. I don't think anybody is upstairs. No, nobody's upstairs yet. If this becomes a problem, I may have to relocate these beds, but at the minute, it seems like this place is getting used. I, oh yeah, look, they're coming inside. Hello, hello, welcome to the inn. Welcome in. <laughs> okay, yeah, they don't love the wall. Okay, you gotta go around it. You gotta go around it, buddy. There you go. I hate that villagers don't understand trapdoors. It's really unfortunate. I'm gonna shrink that divider even though I think it's cute. <laughs> it's fine. And they did find their way upstairs. Cute! Can you not find your bed? Are you, are you struggling, sir? No, those beds are occupied. Those, those, you can't step on the guests. Oh my goodness. Okay, it's fine. Well, overall, I think I would call this building quite the success. There's a few more, of course, decoration details that we can still put in place, but let's uh, kind of leave it here, see if we get used to how it looks. <laughs> you can, of course, all tell me what you think down in the comments down below. I think it fits. I think I really like it. And I especially love the fact that you can just walk right through here. It doesn't cut off the entire area. It's still easy to access everything. I have picked up this cauldron temporarily in hopes that this villager will locate the job that is in the library and it appears that they are doing so. Wow, look at you go. Okay, this is perfect. Are you the new one? You are, wow, look at you. Okay, so now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset this villager until it gives me mending. The way that we do that is just by picking up the workbench and putting it back down over and over and over until it works. Hello, now oh, protection three. You know, I'd probably also take a good protection four villager, but I think I need mending as more of a priority at this point. Oh my gosh. I finally did it. <laughs> this is a really expensive mending, um, but I'm gonna go with it because I, I can't sit here any longer. It's been 30 minutes. Um, that's enough. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna bar this off, keep that lovely villager upstairs, and we're gonna go grab some emeralds to trade with them. Just gonna buy a bookshelf from this villager just to lock them in and make sure that this trade does not get rerolled. Perfect. Oh, heck yeah, so many melons. <laughs> this is perfect. We're gonna get a few more emeralds just to get some mending going on some of our gear. Now, where are the farmers? Hello, Barbara, look at you. Thank you, thank you. And we'll get Pierre as well. Thank you, thank you. That gives me 47 emeralds, which is enough to buy some mending. Thank you very much for that mending book. <laughs> okay, that is epic. That means we can use this, put it on our gear so that it doesn't have to break. Very cool. We are going to have unlimited of these mending books, so it doesn't really matter which of my tools I put it on. For right now, I'm going to be putting it on my pickaxe. I really like this pickaxe. I think it's got a good efficiency on it. Good silk touch. It's great. And now it will get mended, which is perfect. And these two bookshelves that I bought from that villager, I'm gonna go ahead and decorate with in the inn. Could always use some extra reading material. Perfect, that adds a little bit of color that we definitely needed. All right, so while we're thinking about these villagers, the inn, trading with them and getting mending, I feel like there's an important area of this village that we haven't thought about in a little while. And that is the, this farming area down here. I have this set up, which is fantastic. It collects all of these pumpkins and melons. It needs to be expanded. But then I also have this ice tunnel. And we've never done anything with this ice tunnel. Why not? It's beautiful. It's an awesome ice tunnel. I feel like we should finally do a little bit of work in this area and go ahead and get a couple of automatic farms going. 
I don't know if this is the sort of idea that any of you are going to be into, but I'm thinking we do semi-automatic farms underground. So I want to picture this area as almost being like a vault of sorts. Like you come underground and there's this entire area that is underground where you could sort of live down here. You could bunker in if anything went wrong and there's underground food, there's like a lounge room, you know, there's there's ways to kind of live in this escape tunnel. And obviously this is a post-apocalyptic scenario that is never actually going to take place in Minecraft unless we force it to happen because zombies, skeletons, and creepers are just not that intelligent. However, it's fun. It's fun to prepare for it. And I've never really done this type of preparing before where my world has a little bit more of a story. So we're gonna try it. And well, we will do a high level raid eventually. So. You never know, maybe Minecraft will surprise us and the raid will be a lot tougher than I expect and I'll actually need it. Probably not, but it's gonna be fun to build in the meantime. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and create three rooms. We're gonna have one for wheat, one for carrots, and one for potatoes. I'm gonna skip out on the beetroot, I think. I like beetroot above, I think it looks great, but farming it is not that important, I don't think. Sorry, beetroot. Okay, mission accomplished. I've been digging for a little while now, and this is what I've come up with. So basically, we have these rooms that are just kind of off of this tunnel that will allow us to, you know, farm in them, <laughs> hopefully. These will be fairly small farms. They can be expanded, of course, because we're underground, but we'll start off with these three rooms and kind of see how it goes. I brought some dirt down so that we can get started with this. Um, I think I'm actually just going to build it up a layer like this. So we're going to do it this wide, and it needs to be eight blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then there'll be water here that collects it into a hopper and chest. I know that it's possible to do fully automatic farms for these resources, but I kind of like the idea of being able to pull a lever and do it myself. And the fully automatic versions include using villagers. And as you know, I am free roaming my villagers, so I don't want to trap them in a farm, <laughs> even if it would be convenient. There we go. So this is what all of the rooms look like with a bit of dirt in them. Perfect. Okay, now the only thing that I need is some dispensers, which we luckily have tons of resources for with the Fletcher, and then some redstone to hook it up to a button. As per usual with these projects, I am in fact out of redstone. Again, I... How does this keep happening to me? I actually do not have any redstone. Oh! <laughs> that actually scared me quite a lot. Hello! Um... What is going on here? <laughs> what the heck? I did not realize the golems got so mad at piglins. Ah, yes. I see the problem. I just haven't been mining it. That's my bad. Okay, got a couple more stacks of redstone. This should hopefully get me through the day. All right, now let's start with this room over here. We're gonna begin by making a little slot for our dispensers. They're all gonna go here, and each of these are gonna have a water bucket in it. Just to clarify, this isn't a design that I invented, but it's been on the internet for a really, really, really long time. Like I can remember doing this design in like 2013. So I'm not sure exactly who created it. It's just something that I've memorized. There we go. That works perfectly, except for the fact that I did in fact wash out the redstone when I did that. Um, <laughs> but it does work. So that's a win in my books. So there we go. Water comes directly to the edge. Anything growing will be knocked off and then we cut it off with another flick of the button. That is perfect. That is literally it. That's the entire design. You can expand this and go another eight and another eight and another eight and infinitely have the water kind of flow downwards. But we're gonna start off with this size and kind of see how it does us. We do have the farms upstairs. This is meant as a little bit of an emergency fund that we'll probably still use on the regular, but you know, it's, it's not like our main source. Okay, I've been trying to settle on a design for this for a long time, but I think I like this. It's a little bit of that greenery in there. We've got some of those nether blocks, some of the orange from the jack-o'-lanterns, and in general, I really like it. We'll be able to come just to the entrance here, click this little button, everything will get harvested, and it'll come down in this chest right here. I like it, I think it's functional, I think it's pretty, and it should work for our underground vault area. 
Of course, I am open to suggestions on what I should do down here, so be sure to let me know if you have any uh, differing opinions on this place. I've spent the vast majority, or <laughs> rather, the entirety of this episode building. Like, I literally have not stopped. I've been building for six hours. <laughs> It's only a 20 minute video so far. Um, but yeah, it's been a lot of building. It's been a lot of deciding what I want to build, how I want to build it, what blocks I want to use. And it's made me realize that I don't have a ton of options, to be honest. And there's no reason for me to not have a ton of options. Like, we kind of can get anything that we want. We have access to a variety of biomes. And I feel like it's a real shame that I haven't gone out and explored and gotten more blocks for myself. So, for the last bit of today's episode, I'm gonna go on a little adventure, collect up some blocks that I've wanted for a while now to decorate with, and while I'm doing so, I'll answer a couple of questions that I see down in the comment section. First question that I'm seeing from the episode 18 comment section is, can you do a live stream? This was asked by Jay Monroy. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Um, I cannot currently do a live stream. I am very sorry about this. I know that I don't think I've properly addressed it in a video, but I am currently um, a student who is working in the hospital, getting experience so that I can one day work uh, for real, not as a student in the hospital. Because of this, I had to relocate to a rural community with a hospital who could take me. So I am currently not in an area that has strong enough internet for me to be confident with streaming. I'm also currently staying with my grandparents, as some of you know, and recording from their basement. So it would just be a little weird weird to go live from here. I'm not super comfy with it. Don't know how the internet is going to hold up. And that's why you haven't seen me live. Thank you for being patient with me while I learn how to be in the hospital. It's really fun. Um, there's a pandemic right now, which makes it a little scary and a little uneasy. And seeing this sort of thing from the actual perspective of healthcare workers in the hospital is definitely different, but I'm learning a lot. Of course, as soon as I get here, the sun would be setting. That's how our life is. Luckily, for some reason in this game, you can just sleep underwater. I don't know why, but <laughs> you can, so that's good. There's this structure out here that is really, really pretty that I've never actually gone to. So we're gonna, we're gonna go on a little adventure right now <laughs> and go investigate. This is the area. This is the mushroom biome over here. There's a mesa over there. We were out here and got to that shipwreck in like episode two, I think. Uh, but we never went here, so let's drink this potion and go exploring. I already hear some baddies. Yes, there we go. Excuse me. No, thank you. Um, let's just see here. Oh, yes. Chest. Okay, some wheat, some coal, a mending fishing rod. That's not bad. I'll take it. I'll take it. Let's see what's over here in this bigger one. Oh my goodness. It's so pretty, actually. I kind of love it. It would be cool to eventually do a survival series where I made a base underwater like this, because this is kind of pretty. Oh, Curse of Vanishing. No, thank you. I will take everything else, though. My main purpose of being out here is actually to use my lovely Silk Touch pickaxe to pick up some of this coral. I could use it for decorations, I could make an aquarium, and I can use the dead coral to create extra texture in my pathways and castle walls. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab a few of these blocks and see how they look in our new kingdom. We also definitely need some of these sea pickles. Oh, <laughs> my inventory is full. All right, I don't want to limb the entire ocean, so here's some of the blocks that I've collected. Not a lot, but hopefully enough to give us a good idea of if we would like to continue doing this in the castle or not. Oh, let me not waste any. Let's get these. Of course, now we definitely need a dedicated chest for all of this coral, and I'm gonna go ahead and take some of this brain coral and plant it outside. I'm not gonna keep it alive and pink. I'm actually gonna plant it in the roads and allow it to turn into dead coral, which should hopefully give us some cool texturing. I really love the way that this looks with the gray texture and it's gonna look so good with more gravel and things in this pathway. Just kind of, I don't know, messing around with it, making it look a little bit better. These roads definitely need some detail and this is helping. Almost at the iron goal. That was very close. It's fine, I'm fine. Okay, this is way better already. I definitely like that. Good improvement, good improvement. The next question is from Jamie who asked, how are my bees? And that's a good question actually. I'm not, not sure how, oh, not sure how my bees are. I should probably check on them. Let's go do that. So if you don't know, I have been keeping bees 
in here, as you can see, they're absolutely adorable. And every now and then I come in here and I breed them. Are you stuck? You get unstuck. There we go. I breed them, they make a baby, and then eventually I'll be able to relocate these lovely bees um, out to our farms. I do want them to eventually be free, um, just not yet. While I was going through and looking for questions, I found a comment that actually was really interesting to me and made me start thinking, which I always appreciate in a comment. This comment is from Hitiki. I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, but they basically wrote a comment saying that my buildings were starting to look a little samey, which they're right. <laughs> they're 100% right. This doesn't offend me. I don't mind getting critique on the building structures. Um, I agree with you, totally. They do look really samey because they're all literally exactly the same like kind of cookie cutter style. Um, they are all matching. And I think that this makes sense for it being a very condensed in village, but you are totally correct in that I could do a much better job of sort of adding variety, but keeping it still very matchy. So let me show you how I am going to try and do this in the future. To start off, we're gonna have to farm some jungle wood. I'm hoping I'll get some saplings from these trees, otherwise this is not gonna be very fun. So, a really fun thing to do in building is create these gradients. I have one right here, different blocks, same general color, just different textures and darkness, lightness, whatever. They're slightly different, but still the same. So, the fun thing for me is because I chose granite, we can actually do this very similar thing. I do have to quickly just go to the mesa though, um, to prove this point, so one second. Welcome to the mesa! Honestly, I feel like I've spent so long in the village at this point that I've sort of forgotten that this even exists. This is such an amazing resource for blocks and I should definitely be using it a lot more. I don't know why I haven't been. Just, just not used to having a mesa so close by. <laughs> okay, but here's what I was saying. Do you see this beautiful block color next to granite, right? They're similar. And then next to jungle wood, like that's kind of a nice gradient where we get three totally different textures and we can kind of fit them into one build to hopefully make the village look a little less of just the same repetitive style, even if it is literally just the same repetitive style. Now, I'm not under some illusion that changing out these blocks every now and then in these buildings is going to be like amazing, game changing, insane. However, it might help every now and then if we have these blocks on hand and we can sort of mix them in. Let's try it with this build that we did today. Forgot my scaffolding, so bear with me for a second. But what if I just change this lower roof right here to be terracotta instead? In my opinion, that still matches. It looks great. It's not a completely different color, but it is a completely different texture. And just glancing at it, it still fits in with the style. It just mixes it up a little bit. So I think that I'm going to keep these blocks on hand and try to do that every now and then, mixing in some jungle wood and some terracotta. Along with the coral and things that we have in, I think this will really help to decorate the village. We also really need some nether blocks. I saw an amazing comment that suggested we use some of the vines from the new nether biomes in gardens like this. And you're totally right, that would help so much. So thank you for all the suggestions. Please keep those coming. As always, everyone, I really appreciate you coming to these videos and watching these episodes. I hope that you're enjoying the progression of this world and don't mind a more buildy focused episode like I had today. I think very soon we're going to start exploring, finding the stronghold, and taking on a few more things in the nether. Thank you for being patient with me while I uh, work in the hospital and am being a student. <laughs> it's a lot of fun and I very much appreciate all of your amazing patience. For those of you who have asked, I am studying medical laboratory science. I'm not a doctor or a nurse. I'm the person who like looks at your blood. It's more like a scientist. I can run tests on it and see what's wrong with you. It's kind of cool. Um, that's a really oversimplified version of what it is. There's a lot of disciplines within it, but whatever. I'll tell that story another day if you're actually interested in what I'm doing in the hospital. Um, but thank you so much for watching and I hope I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye everyone!